Welcome to WordPath, the show about Oklahoma Indian languages and the people who are preserving and teaching them. My guest tonight is Melissa Hinkle. Uh, we're going to look in detail at a package of Comanche classroom materials that Melissa uh, developed, and we're going to talk a little bit later about some video that can be used in the classroom. First of all, let's review uh, part one of this show. This is part two of a, of a series of two shows on creating language teaching materials for the Native American language classroom. In part one, we talked mostly about word lists, flashcards, word cubes, which were little uh, cube-shaped kind of toys which had a word written on each side. You could toss them and have the student read whichever word landed up. Um, word cubes, uh, dictionaries, posters, alphabet strips, alphabet posters, and the use of objects in the classroom. Uh, about those cubes, by the way, this is something I learned about from the Absentee Shawnee Language Program recently. They had developed these little cubes with one word written on each side so that you had six words and you could kind of make a game out of tossing it and reading the one that landed up. You could also do that with pictures, of course, and, and ask the student to name uh, in the language of the item whose picture landed face up. Uh, we talked about posters. I wanted to talk just a little bit more tonight because I had, had mentioned that a good cheap way to make posters for the classroom is to take old calendars apart and use the pictures on those. Let me show you a couple of examples and how they might be used. Um, it's that time of year when you throw out the old calendars and take in the new anyway. This, here's one from the National Humane Education Society. And I wanted to show you just a couple of pictures from it that could certainly be torn out and used in the classroom. The first one is just a picture of a dog. Now this is an example of a kind of calendar that has very simple pictures. You might just use this for, um, for a vocabulary drill so the teacher could ask in the language, you know, what is this? And the student would answer, that's a dog. And there are several pictures of that type in here. Of course, it's mostly pets because it's humane society. And not too much action. There are some that involve pictures of two animals, like this picture of the two horses. So this would be useful, for instance, in the Comanche classroom. When you um, wanted to talk about singular and dual forms, you could talk about buku, which would be a picture of one horse, or pukuvuk, when you have two horses, as you do in this picture. So this would be an example of pukuvuk in Comanche. Now that's a very simple kind of calendar. Let me show you something a little more involved. Here's one from an organization called Pet Partners. Um, again, it's got a lot of pets in it. Maybe you could show this picture if one of the cameras could get it. Um, can we get in on that one? Let me hold it up a little bit more. As you can see, it's a woman sitting by a tree, and she seems to be kind of talking to, or at least looking into the eyes of her dog. This kind of uh, calendar picture is better um, for a little bit more advanced stage. Not, you wouldn't just name a dog for this picture but, picture, but you could go quite a bit farther with it. You could say, uh, who is in this picture? The answer would be a dog and a woman. What's the woman doing? What's the dog doing? Why is the woman looking at the dog if you wanted to get more advanced and your students were ready for that? And they could, this would kind of encourage you, encourages you to imagine a whole story behind this picture. Maybe she's scolding the dog because it behaved badly. Maybe she's telling the dog, I love you. We don't know, but the students can put, put a lot of their own creativity into their answers. And then, let's see, I don't want to spend too long on calendars because everybody knows what calendars are available. Here's one from the VFW that has some nice um, nature shots in it. Let me find that one I wanted to show. Where again, uh, it's not just one object, so you can get a little bit more involved in the questions that you ask. Well, here's a nice shot of a lake. Looks like maybe in the Rockies somewhere. Can we see this? So you have various things in this picture that you could name. You have trees, lake, clouds, mountains, and various plants. Uh, you have a reflection, if you know how to talk about that in the language. But you could also ask questions like, where is this? And the students might answer, it looks like it's in the mountains. Or, is this summer or winter? You could ask that kind of question about a picture like that. It's a little bit richer. And then, of course, we have the Native American art calendar, which comes out every year, which is, I think is a wonderful source of art. Here's, here are some nice pieces from last year's calendar. Here's a Dick West. Um, painting, which I think is a wonderful uh, illustration that you could use in the language classroom because there's so much going on in it. There are people and animals and there's activity and there's a lot that you could talk about. And then this next one is from the, the late Doc Tate Nebequia. 
and it shows uh, two Indians in a canyon, and one of them is incising, uh, sorry, rock art onto the canyon wall. So there's a lot of activity again, and you can talk about that, and you can say that he's writing or he's carving or what is the horse doing? He's standing. Uh, what is this man doing? He's sitting. What's the other man doing? He's riding. That kind of thing. And finally, whoops, here's another one by the same artist called Night Visitors, and it shows a corral with um, horses in it and some wolves prowling around the edge. So there's a lot of interesting activity there, too. You could say, you know, uh, you ask people what's going on with the wolves. Well, they're hungry. Well, what are the horses doing? They're frightened, and that sort of question. So you can get into more depth with that. Anyway, I just wanted to show some examples of calendars and how they could be used to really get students talking about something that's going on. Uh, we didn't talk too much about grammar exercises, and I think um, we may leave that till the end. I had that on my list from the previous show, but we want to make sure that we have enough time to get to some other things we have in mind tonight. Uh, I wanted to mention that student books are a great idea. Uh, by that, I mean books that the students will create as part of their classroom activities. For instance, if you were teaching kin terms, you might have the students bring in photos of their family members, and they can put a, each photo on a page with the word in the language underneath saying, you know, this is my mother or my father or my brother or my sister. Things like that get the students more involved. And I wanted to talk just a little bit about dialogues, too. Uh, where'd my dialogues go? I want to put one up here if we can get a good shot of it. Fine, if we can't, I'll just have to read it. I think maybe we can get this one. This is from a Caddo class. And this, um, we're not going to be able to get this clearly enough. Well, you can see that there are turns involved here. Let me, I think maybe I should just read this. But the idea was that the students would memorize this dialogue and then practice having this conversation with each other. Um, First of all, the group knocks at the door, and Randlett, who was our teacher, says, that ya yut, which means come in. One of the members of the group says, ho we kwa hot. Okay, are you all right? Which is the way of greeting people in, uh, in Caddo. You say, are you all right? And he says, ah, hey, sina sat wa wa, and, which means, yes, how about yourselves? And it goes on from there. One of the things I wanted to point out about developing dialogues like this, it's a very good thing to do. It helps the students to do more than just a word or a phrase at a time. They can handle longer stretches of speech, which is a necessary skill if they're going to become fluent. Um, and also they learn conversation, which, you know, if you just go through word lists, you're going to miss a lot of the conversational back and forth, which is part of being a fluent speaker. Uh, so it's a very good thing to do, but the m one caution I would say is make sure that when you are eliciting these, in other words, sitting down with your teacher and developing the dialogue that the students are going to memorize, make sure that you don't do it by translation. Do it instead by working from the situation, saying, suppose people were knocking at the door what would you say? Rather than saying, how would you say hello? Say, what would you say? And then what would they say back? I like to proceed that way, and then I think you get a more realistic conversation in the language. Uh, I also uh, want to point out how important it is to, do, to use cultural activities in the classroom. On a previous show, we had Lucille McClung demonstrating a doll that she had made and how she uses it in the classroom. I'd like to show a little excerpt of that. On this end, and it, it has an opening over here. What do you call that money belt in Comanche? Neki. You say kwasu. Mm -hmm. You say tuka nai te kwasu. You say magwananap. You say manap. You say maneki. But papui with a matani kind. I just love the way Lucille uses that doll. She made it herself, and it's authentic Comanche dress, and then she talks about it in Comanche. I think that works really well. Now, Melissa, you've been waiting very patiently while I <laughs> yammered on. Um, I'd like to hear more about your project. Um, Melissa was in uh, all three of our Comanche language classes at OU, starting a couple years ago, and took some of what she learned and uh, has really given a lot back to the Comanche community, I think, by developing this package of classroom materials which she made available to them. Could you tell us a little bit about the history of this project and how you got into it and how you were able to do it? Well, I got interested in your class the third semester when we designed projects for small children. Mm -hmm. And um, the honors program had an undergraduate research opportunity project that I 
got a grant from them to mm -hmm. design this curriculum package and what I wanted to do was make a set of classroom materials that teachers could have on hand ready to use. Mm -hmm. I'll help you with that if I can. You know, there's a lot of material there. Okay. I even like the holder here, the uh, portfolio thing. It's very nice. And the main part is a, a book, a mm -hmm. curriculum book, and the uh, artwork on the cover is done by Leonard Black Moon Riddles, a Comanche artist, and he did this specifically for this project, and we were really proud that he was willing to do that for us. Mm. And the, uh, the book is divided yeah. into, uh, Here, let me sh let you show it. into sections for the teachers to use. The first section is an introduction that tells not only about this book, but about uh, language teaching uh, rules for Oklahoma public schools. Mm -hmm. It explains the Comanche alphabet as you set up in our classes. So this is sort of a teacher's manual. It's the right. kind of book that this is, right? Right. And it has um, activities that they can run off for classroom use, too. Mm -hmm. And um, the other sections are on animals and plants and numbers and colors. Mm -hmm people and things. And now this, is, this looks like something that you would cut out and put together. How does this right. one work? This is a cut and paste mm -hmm. and there are several pages of animals like this mm -hmm. and the children are color at first and then they cut out the pieces to assemble this okay. animal and it has the Comanche name Wakare for turtle okay. up here. So the idea is the teacher would have copies of this made and each student would have their own. Right, right. And there's several activities. There's a, a bird. A hootsu. And there's a, another cut and paste where they match the animal with the Comanche word mm -hmm. that it goes with. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to copy a lot of uh, pages from other books because I'm not very artistic. <laughs> <laughs> but we tried well, to just have... goes to show you don't have to be a grand artiste right. <laughs> in order to make really good teaching materials. I think they came out great. But we tried to have a different section for each different topic. Mm -hmm. And these are numbers where the children can trace the letters that are mm -hmm. dotted out for them. Mm -hmm. And then the section on people and things. Here's a Comanche family. Oh, that's nice. And we took a picture uh, of a traditional family out of a children's workbook, but we had to alter it to make it match the Comanche idea of family because mm -hmm. the, the different uh, terms for grandparents on each side of the family mm -hmm. and older brothers and, and uh, younger brothers mm -hmm. and things right. like that. Right. So I thought that was good. And this section included um, a lesson on Comanche dress with the, the names for the different articles of clothing. Mm -hmm. and Reminds me of Lucy's doll. <laughs> right. <laughs> And there's, there's a lot of modern pictures, too. It's, it's not all just old-style pictures, uh -huh. but it's things that children are oh, used like to baseball. seeing right. in their everyday lives. I think that's great. People, sometimes people think of the traditional stuff, which is important, and they kind of stop there. But if a language is going to live on, you have to be able to talk about right. modern right. things in it, too. And then I the last nice. section is for older children. Uh -huh. And the lesson that's in there now is a geography lesson that we did in your class, I, mm -hmm. I designed in there, and it tells about where the Comanches originally lived and includes a few Comanche words, mm -hmm. like for the directions, north, south, east, and west, and um, the names of the bands. Mm -hmm. And then we had a, a crossword puzzle using different names of uh, different landforms, the Comanche term for them. And this section someday, when I finally complete this, will also have a social studies lesson about yeah. Comanche term ideas of government and a science lesson. That would be really neat. So. Show us some of what you have in your lap. Too. Okay. These are sort of hands-on activities for the children. I don't know if you can see this very well. This is a placemat with the plate and fork and napkin all labeled on there and also so it says Nahu, Nahu is written on the knife right and today well is written along the outline of the spoon and right. so forth I think that's probably hard to see but and then to go works. with it we just and then got you place those the, on it. Uh -huh. the paper so plate the song our plate that goes where it says to song right and the little plastic uh -huh. forks and spoons uh -huh. and then we took some pictures of fruit and vegetables <laughs> I think that's and great colored them and labeled them with uh -huh. the Comanche words and then laminated them 
so the children could uh, pretend like they were eating mm -hmm. Comanche foods while they learned the words. Mm -hmm. Or you could actually have like pieces of apple or pear sure, and, yeah. and use them like that. Or they could do it with this with this pretend setup, and then when they actually have lunch, they can talk about the stuff for real right. too, which would be great. Right. I think that's wonderful. And we also included uh, sets of bingo cards mm -hmm. because mainly just because that's an easy game for children to play. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate enough to find some stickers that had plains animals like buffaloes mm -hmm. and uh, antelopes. So this isn't the usual bing bingo where they call out the number and, and, <laughs> and no. try to win the prize. Explain <laughs> yeah. how it's a little different. Right? Yeah, uh, the teacher, the, on the ones with just the pictures, uh -huh. the teacher can uh, call out the words uh -huh. and then the children can cover them, the animal they up cover as up they the go. the animal whose name was just called out right, until right. they get so many in a row. And then there's a set that also matches this that only has the words. Uh -huh. And so the teacher could either say the word and have the children find it or she could hold up a picture yeah. of that animal. So that would help with their reading and it. writing skills. Right. As well. And we had fruits and colors. colors yeah and numbers. I think that's great. Uh, before we run out of time, I want to make sure that you show your larger um, right. flip chart thing. I okay. think that's great too. I got this idea from, uh, I used to work at a school and saw a lot of the ideas that textbook manufacturers make. They make big and little book sets now. Huh. And the children hold the small books mm -hmm. and the teacher holds the large book uh -huh. and they all read together. So here's the page that says it's Asadi. This is a dog. Right. Maybe we could show how those are the same. Okay, so the student's <laughs> looking at this and then the teacher has this at the front of the classroom. Right. The and, it, and each page, it tells the children either to point to something on the page or to find something on the page. Uh -huh. When my kids were little, they used to like to point, you know, as yeah. we read the book. And so this is all, we should say, in case this isn't quite legible, that this is in Comanche, it says, Wa'o a tiawe, which means point out the kitty, right? Right. And right. so there's a kitty in there and the children will understand this and point to the right animal. Right. The right. I think that's great. And these materials were actually used in Comanche classrooms, weren't they? Yes, uh, we what, used them in the the summer program last summer. Uh -huh. the, for what the kind of feedback did you get? Real positive. The kids seemed to really like anything they could get hold of and color and yeah. play with. I think I think it's great. You've really designed stuff that's very engaging for kids. They can handle it. It's colorful. They have their own. You know, all these kinds of things I think are really good thinking. Do you Thank have anything you. else there you can talk about just real quickly before we oh, show our video? Oh, this is a little Comanche coloring book oh, yes, that's that was great. just done with computer clip art. Uh -huh. and uh, just a few different simple words. Yeah. So again, you don't have to be a master right. artist to put something like this together. You can just use your clip art that comes with your computer program. Right. And still it's something that's really fun for the kids right. to do. And it gets them doing something that's related to the language. Well, I think that's terrific. Thank um, you. Would you want to say just a word about working with computers? I talked about this a little bit last time when, in creating word lists mm -hmm. and dictionaries and stuff. That's obviously helped you a lot here too. It, it has, especially um, in the preliminary stages of trying to set it up uh -huh. and if you make mistakes it's a lot easier to correct but sure. also like me I'm not I'm not an artist yeah. so I so have to have depend on art, yeah. clip art and things like that yeah. so well I think that's terrific that's Thank really you. good <laughs> thanks for coming and showing us that thanks and uh, I want to um, if we have time, we'll, we'll do a little bit more of this, but I want to make sure we get this video in. We haven't talked much yet about using video in the classroom, and that's an important tool nowadays that we have in the language classroom. You can record things like the dialogues that we were talking about. We had that Caddo dialogue. You can uh, video record two native speakers of Caddo having this conversation with each other, and students can use that for study and to help them memorize the dialogue. And of course, you can have little playlets. You can have oral, oral histories, songs, stories, all sorts of things. In fact, it was recently suggested to me by Mary Collins, who used to produce a show here and is now teaching English in Korea. She said in Korea they have something called noribang, which is it's a kind of karaoke sort of setup where you can do language learning with a videotape. And I, I'd like to see uh, some Oklahoma tribes set up things like this. I, I have a scheme in mind, but we'll see if we can get one done for the show sometime in the coming months, where maybe we could have a 49 song, uh, have the soundtrack be the 49 song, which is a social dance song, very popular kind of song in Comanche, and then have that acted out somehow or illustrated on the video. And you could play it through with the sound and then play it through again without the sound, but just with the Comanche words written across the bottom or something, so that people could learn to sing along with it. Uh, I think there's a great potential there. I would like to show a sample of one video now. Uh, this is a, a, a excerpts from a videotape called How Coyote Stole the Sun. 
We're, we're doing a little departure here in showing a non-Oklahoma language because I think it illustrates the point so well. This is about a Yokuts story, and the Yokuts tribe is in central California. Uh, and this tape, I think, is very interesting because it shows a really creative and good use of a combination of contemporary illustrations, artwork, animation, nature shots, and uh, all kinds of interesting effects to illustrate the story which is being told in the soundtrack. In this case, the story is all in English, but of course it could be in any language. Uh, let's take a look at this excerpt, if we could, Prabhat. <laughs> Gather round the fire now. Sit still, or you'll get a humpback. And listen. Listen to Coyote sing. If you are ever lonely in the night, and you want to see and hear your friend Coyote, then you should sing this song. Coyote and Eagle lived in the hills down by Bakersfield. Their house was inside the solid rock. Coyote was known to be real smart, while his uncle Eagle was wise. Most of the time there is a big difference between the two ways of thinking. They say that Coyote, in the morning time, ran up the Sierras to the north, gathered all the wood he could hold. Then he was going to run down the coast side. His uncle said, water is dangerous, be careful. If you hear anything up that way, don't touch it. Well, about sundown, Coyote ran up the coast range and came to the place in back of Tutschau where they have the sun hung up in a feta tree, right in the middle of a clearing. All kinds of animals were dancing around in the open. Coyote said, what is this? He lay down there close and heard the dancing and singing. He went back the same night and told his uncle, I heard singing down that way the other side of the hill. Eagle said, they're people, don't touch it. Don't go close in up there, you'll get killed. But Coyote wanted to see how the sun was tied to the Wifeta tree. Coyote went back the next night and lay there close until near morning. And then he heard some people say, the wood is nearly gone. Coyote said, what'll I do? I still don't know how it is tied. Well, I'll bring the wood. He went back to Eagle. When they had eaten breakfast, his uncle told him, don't go close to it. Coyote brought wood that night from way down where Eagle was. When the animals came for dancing, they found the wood already there. They said, here's lots of wood. Then Coyote made himself like wood and the people threw him into the fire. But he was just like green wood in the middle of the fire and did not burn. The people said, oh, it's green. And they threw him out again. Well, the next night, Coyote came back again, a little early that time. Some people saw him and took him to their chief. The chief said, where do you come from? 
come from salt, said Coyote. There are lots of people down there. But in truth, there are only two eagle and coyote. The people said, do you know how to sing? Yes, I know all kinds of singing, said Coyote. Coyote was trying to become part of the group, so he sang with them. When he had finished singing, he returned to his uncle and told his uncle all about the fire hanging on the tree and that the people thought it was the sun. Uncle said, that's no fire, that is the sun. Can you get it? Yes, it is loose, not tight. I'll get it, said Coyote. Can you run? If you're a good runner, all right. If not, that's the last we're hearing of it. There are lots of people there who are good runners, said the uncle. Well, uncle told him to go and see if he could pull up a mulberry tree. One has to pull it straight up without breaking it off. If it breaks off, no good. Coyote went out a little and pulled one up, but it broke off. Uncle told him to go way up north along the Sierras. Coyote did so, and the tree did not break off. Then he fixed sharp arrows by using the root end of the tree. The uncle told him to shoot the fire where the animals were dancing, and that would make the fire burn way up high. Coyote did so. The fire blazed up and became so bright that the people there could see nothing for a while. Then Coyote sprang up, seized the sun, and ran toward the lake. When the fire burned down and the people saw their son was gone, they sent out their best runners to catch him. They shouted, catch him, kill him. Some Isn't that great? Uh, that whole videotape runs about 14 or 15 minutes. I'm sorry we don't have time to show the whole thing. I think it's really charming and really nicely done, although it is all in English. It's not really a, a native language teaching thing. It's more of a teaching about how to appreciate the uh, traditional stories and the culture. But I, th I really, as I said before, I think it's wonderful the way the different kinds of imagery have been combined there. And again, just as Melissa was saying, you don't have to be a master artist to put together really useful and really engaging classroom materials. You don't have to be a master videographer to put together something like this. I think the video is it, it's very good quality, especially those nature shots. They're just terrific. But uh, I think anyone could do something of this sort that would be useful and very valuable to the preservation of their language and their culture just with a simple video camera, a little bit of editing, and a lot of imagination and creativity. And that's what it takes to do language teaching right. So uh, good luck to everyone in your language teaching. Thank you again, Melissa, for Thank joining you. us tonight. And everybody join us again next time on WordPath. <laughs> Na hene yo hene, na hene yo hene, ana ma gwana kita, wa pene ma da oni kita. Na hene yo hene, na hene yo hene, ana ma gwana kita, wa pene ma da oni kita. Na hene yo hene, na hene yo hene, ana ma gwana kita, wa pene ma da oni kita. Na hene yo hene, na hene yo hene, ana ma gwana kita, wa pene ma da oni kita.